See, parliament uh, has almost, uh, one can think of parliament as having three functions. One is its main legislative function, where it has to pass the law. Secondly, it's also a deliberative body, because it discusses various issues from time to time, which are of general interest, do not pertain to a specific law. And thirdly, it's a body where there is accountability of the, where, of, of the government or of public officials. Now, over the years, I find that the legislative content, first of all, is not adequate as far as time is concerned. We, we find that not enough time is being given to legislative work. This is partially because of the manner in which parliament is now becoming like a general debating club and that too a little unruly at times. Secondly, the emphasis on the work of debating a statute, which used to be extremely important in the older days, is going down. The work in committee, of course, is not really known, although a lot of work is being done actually in the committee. The result is that the actual draft of bills are shoddy. And one can understand this when bills, have, bills are rushed through within a matter of almost hours rather than days, which a normal bill would take. Today, I don't think MPs have time or interest in this approach. And this is very critical when the bill becomes a statute and has to be interpreted by a court. See, Parliament has three roles which are of importance. One is its principal role as a legislative body, where it makes laws. Secondly, it's a deliberative body where it discusses problems of the moment or problems which affect the nation. And thirdly, it's a body where the government is to give account for the action of public officials or for its policy. Over the last few years, one finds two problems with its legislative function. Firstly, it just does not have enough time to consider the bills in their full depth. This is partially because Parliament has become sometimes an unruly debating club, where not enough time is spent on the function of passing the law. Secondly, because laws are passed in such, at such speed that there is no, not enough time available for deliberating on each particular part of the bill, the interrelationship of the various words and phrases to each other. I do not think enough attention is paid to that. And that leaves the problem to the to courts to decide what the will of parliament has expressed in the words is. When the words themselves are ambiguous, this will is more difficult to ascertain. The work of committees of parliament is extremely critical. And in fact, if you see in the American Senate, the bulk of the work is really done by the Senate committees which are open to all parties and are, and are actually a part of the open debate. British Parliament in its earlier days and our Parliament even today has not fully adopted the system, although I must say a great deal of work goes on in the committees of our Parliament. Now, as far as rules and regulations are concerned, they are supposed to be laid on the table of the House, but that's not merely a physical ceremony. It's also a period when there can be some scrutiny, but essentially people don't have time for that purpose. You see, there are two areas here which require a little more uh, attention. First is in-depth committee discussion, where people from various other disciplines are also invited to participate and give evidence. For instance, I have myself given evidence 
in the foreign exchange, uh, on the foreign exchange bill and made some suggestions about uh, a period within which old action should be brought to a closure. Similarly, other experts in finance, in uh, matters of, uh, say, defense, can also be invited in the committee. Formally, it is done, but effectively, you do not really have very much of this response. Secondly, I think much more research is required to back M MP's efforts, because an MP by himself, frankly, unless he is on the government side or he is on, that is, he appears, he is for the party in power, a, a, a spokes, or a spokesman for one of the opposi opposition parties, really doesn't have the role which he would himself envisage when he was elected. On the second part which I mentioned, the role of PRS is very critical because if you see any legislative schedule of parliament, it has an incredible range of subjects to deal with. For instance, recently they are dealing with matters like anti-torture bill, matters of Companies Act, matters of foreign exchange. Now, this is a wide range in which it is very difficult to accuse anyone of complete expertise. This is exactly where the PRS has rendered service and can render even more service, and that is to do research. Now, in other countries uh, like America, you have got research assistants which each senator has, and he can engage someone for his particular project. Uh, we do not, alas, have that sort of facility. I think some nominal amount of 10,000 or so is given to an MP for, I think, purchasing a computer and getting a computer literate person to help, which is really almost derisory compared to the load that he has to carry. Therefore, he requires, first of all, a great deal of research to be done. Secondly, and this is critical, elsewhere parties, as in United Kingdom, would give support by preparing party positions on it. I remember as an old member of the Fabian party, we had prepared some sort of a, a, a white a paper on anti-colonial movement in England that in those days. The, that type of work is one not done by our parties in any depth. But giving a whip is not really giving a research paper. And equally important is the fact that somebody must provide objective analysis of a bill without taking a party stand, but to show what are the strengths, weaknesses, what are the matters which the bill addresses, what are the matters which the bill has not addressed. And this is exactly where PRS is filling up a very a, a critical gap in our parliamentary work.